Welcome to Linear Relations, Problems Involving Simultaneous Linear Models. Hmm, simultaneous, meaning at the same time. Well, that's not going to phase as we hope because we already have met simultaneous equations before. So, as is usual, what's our important language for this video? Well, uh, simultaneous equations and cost functions. Okay, so previously we were talking about the idea of cab companies, and I think Ethan was taking a cab, and we learned about the idea of flag fall and per kilometer charging. All right, so before you even get in a cab, theoretically speaking, you have to pay for the opportunity, and then you pay per kilometer from then on. Let's go back to that idea, and this time we'll look at Casey. Now, Casey has decided to take a cab to the airport because she lives in the city. She has two taxi companies to choose from. Lucky her. One has a higher flag fall than the other, but a lower per kilometre charge. At what distance does the first cab company cost too much? If we look at the bottom, we can see that grey top taxes are a $35 basic charge, that's the flag fall, and $0.75 cents per kilometre. And the yellow cabs are $50 basic charge and $0.25 cents per kilometre. OK, so we've got two totally different cab companies. Let's look at whether we can come up with an equation for each of them with regards to our cost function. Now, again, as in a previous video, we met the idea of a cost function. So let's have C1, to stand for my first cab, is going to be equal to, right, well, we've got to come up with some sort of fixed charge. What do I pay the cab to get in before I even use it? Well, C1 for grey top is going to be 35. And we're going to plus onto that our charge of 75 cents per kilometre. So that means I have 0.75 times, and we'll come up with K again to stand for our kilometers. So I end up with 35 plus 0.75K as my cost function for that first cab. What about my second? Well, my second cab is going to be pretty much similar. So we have a $50 basic charge, but this time only 25 cents per kilometer. So my cost function becomes 50 plus 0.25 K. Now these are effectively simultaneous equations. All right? They deal with the same idea. This is equation number one, and this is equation number two. Now whereas before in simultaneous equations we've done a huge amount of algebra, what we're actually trying to find is the distance where the first cab, cab company costs too much. Well, why don't we actually try and find out the distance where they actually cost the same? And there's the trick here. They cost the same. They cost the same. So what we're looking for is a situation where C1 is exactly the same as C2. From then we can sort of work out who's going to be more expensive. Well if we're looking at the costs being the same then I'm pretty sure we can look at the idea of the equations being the same. We've got C1 we've decided was 35 plus 0.75k and C2 is 50 plus 0.25k. We decided that C1 and C2 are going to be the same, which would suggest that these two equations would also be the same. So I can equate them. I can write 35 plus 0.75k equals 50 plus 0.25k. Well, that actually is pretty much where the simultaneous linear model's new stuff finishes. We're now back to basic algebra because we've got numbers and letter terms and we're going to try and work out the value of k. Well, to do that, we've got to move both k terms to the same side and I would assume the number size to the same side. Well, 50 is the biggest number, so let's move the 35 over there, which would then mean that the plus 25 or 0.25k has got to move over here. Right, so the 0.75k we'll leave there, just to follow convention for the moment. The 50 stays there. The plus 35 moves over to become minus 35. And the plus 0.25 moves over here to become minus 0.25k. Now obviously we tend not to like that to be at the beginning. And so we go back to our idea that 0.75k is at the start of my queue. And I really don't like queue jumpers. And so... Writing it out slightly neater gives us that. So 0.75 take away 0.25, well that's 3 quarters of a K minus a quarter of a K is half a K or 0.5 K. And 50 take away 35 is 15. Well, between a number 
and a letter. Here's a kissy kissy. And so I can now move 0.5 in the times to the other side. So k becomes 15 divided by 0.5, which is actually which is actually 30. Wow! What does that actually mean? Well, what that actually tells us now is that k being 30 is the distance where they both have the same cost. So can we now look at which one is going to cost the most? Well, theoretically speaking, yeah, because this is going to have a cheaper C2, has a more expensive stub, but cheaper per kilometer from then on. So I would imagine that actually C1, using logic, is going to be more expensive after 30 kilometers. Right? So I would imagine the distance the first care company costs too much is 30 kilometers. Well, having got that general idea, could we now graph those? Because you never know, the question may actually ask you to graph the two graphs. It actually may even fact start ask you to draw them first. That shouldn't be that difficult because we have the general equation of a line as y equals mx plus c, and we now have our two cost functions. We knew that c1 was 35 plus 0.75k, which, if we actually write that in y equals mx plus c form, would give us 0.75k plus 35. We know that c2 is equal to 50 plus 0.25k, or writing it in y equals mx plus c form, we get 0.25k plus 50. Right, well, let's relate that back to learning. What do we know? Well, we know that this 35 and this 50 here must be my intercept. And this 0.75 and 0.25 is equal to our gradient. Well, a 0.75 is equal to 3 quarters, and 0.25 is equal to 1 quarter. So which will have the steeper gradient? Well, 3 quarters is bigger than 1 quarter, so this one here will have a steeper line than this one here, for example. And if you remember, rise over run, rise overrun. So three up, four across, one up, four across. Now again, I'm not going to go into the detail of that, but let's just have a look at what the graphs might look like. So let's have our, our first cab company. So we decided our first cab company had a intercept of 35. So this point here would be 35 and we would know that it would have a gradient of 0.75, all right? And again, we know how that goes. That means for every three across, it, uh, sorry. And we know how that goes. For every three up, it goes four across. And if we now add on our second line for our second cab company, now it had a higher start, so our intercept was higher, but our gradient was lower. And what we do is we find out that these two graphs cross, and they cross at this point here. And if you remember from our previous lesson, simultaneous equations, that's where two lines meet, that is the point where the values are the same. Now that means that the value of the cost and the distance is going to be exactly the same. So if I was to label my axis, that there would be cost, this here would be the number of kilometers, and so the point that it costs, uh, crosses, if we were to mark this down, would actually be 30, as we'd already found that previously. And if we wanted to, we could go on and work out, well, actually, what would the cost of that be by substituting 30 into my equation? A little bit beyond the scope of this, right? But the fact that these cross is very important because, as I say, the point where they cross, and sometimes it's easiest to find where they cross and then find other information, the point where they cross is important to us. So one more example, and this is where things get interesting. So we have the idea that Daniel and James are racing over 100 meters. Now, first thing that sort of jumps out at me there is the fact that the distance is going to be exactly the same. Daniel runs so that it takes A seconds to run one meter, and James runs so that it takes B seconds to run one meter. James wins the first race by one second. So that means the difference it takes is one second. So can I come up with a formula for that? So if we look at the number of seconds it takes, it, we know that Daniel will take A seconds to run one meter. So that means over 100 meters, 
he takes 100 A seconds. And we know the same thing for James, but this time James runs 100 meters in B seconds. We don't know what that is. So he takes 100 B seconds. Now if we think about that, we have to work out who took the longer time. Well, if James wins by one second, then Daniel is the slower time. So 100A minus 100B is equal to one second. All right, so Daniel took slower because James won by one second. So we have an equation. How many unknowns do I have in this equation? Well, I've got two. And if I've got two unknowns, I need to have two equations. Well, we continue reading the question. The next day, they race again over 100 meters, but James gives Daniel a five meter start so that Daniel runs 95 meters. James wins by 0.4 seconds. Wow. All right, find the values of A and B at the speeds at which they run. Now, obviously, I think we have to assume they run at the same speed. So Daniel has a five meter start. So Daniel only runs 95 meters. So in this one, Daniel runs 95 meters at speed A, but James runs the full 100 meters at speed B. All right, and James wins again. So Daniel has the slower time. So we have 95A minus 100B is equal to, well in this case, he wins by 0.4 seconds. Well, we could go on and draw this graph, but let's actually use algebra because the values could be nicer. And let's just use the idea of simultaneous equations. So we have 100A minus 100B is equal to 1. And 95A minus 100B is equal to 0 0.4. If we look at this, we see that one of our columns is the same. They're both negative, so the best thing for me to be able to do here is actually take them away. Now, let's just think about that, because if I have a minus, minus a minus, it becomes a plus. So minus 100 B plus 100 B would then become zero. Now, I know there's this strange rule that a positive and a positive and a negative and a negative normally make a positive. But in simultaneous equations, I like to think of it in this stage and this stage only, that it actually does the opposite. So when the signs are the same, I'd normally have a plus, but actually I'm going to take them away. That eliminates them. So I have 100A minus 95A, which hopefully is 5A, and 1 minus 0.4 is 0 0.6. So we know that A is 0 0.12. How does that help us? Well, I can now go back and work out my value of B by using 100A minus 100B equals 1. 100 times A is 100 times 0 0.12 minus 100B equals 1. So 100 times 0 0.12 is 12 minus 100B equals 1. So ooh, we don't like that at all. So what we're going to do is move the minus 100B over here to make it positive. So just to state that again, we don't like negative numbers, so I'm going to move that minus 100B over here, and I'm going to move the 1 into its place, so to get the B on its own. So that gives us 12 minus 1 is 100B, so 11 is 100B, or B is 11 divided by 100, or 0 0.11. So we've now done the first part of the question, which actually says find the value of A and B, but it wants to know the speed at which Daniel runs. Or Daniel takes A seconds to run one meter. Now speed is given in as distance divided by time. Now his distance is one meter divided by the time it's taking, and that's A, all right, because it says A seconds, which is 0 0.12. And if we work that out on our calculator, then 1 over 0 0.12 is the same as uh, 12 over 100, which is equal to 100 over 12, or 50 over 6, or 25 over 3, meters per second. Now obviously that working out seems to spread all over my board, but hey, you can rewind and find it. 
right? So the speed, which is given by distance over time, and it's interesting, isn't it, how often that thing seems to have come up, how often this formula seems to have come up in this section, has allowed you to then find that the speed of Daniel is 25 over 3 meters per second. Good going, Daniel. That signifies the end of this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. Have a good evening.